you're back. I'm so happy you're here. Hi guys, I'm so glad you could make it back for part two in the Craftober series, honestly. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is where it's gonna all come together. In this episode, we are going to take those tiny tombstones from episode one and put them inside of a tiny little cemetery today. So if you didn't see part one of the series, there's gonna be a link somewhere on the side over here, hopefully. There's gonna be tons more throughout the month and it's all leading up to celebration of spooky Halloween. I'm so excited. Come with me guys, let's start crafting. It's gonna be great. All right, bye. This is the insulation foam we discussed in episode one. Choose a size that you want your finished cemetery to be and decide how thick you want to make the walls. I'm doing six by nine inches and the walls are one half inch thick. Later on, I decide that that's too big and I cut off some pieces. But for now, you just need a rough idea. Draw out some rectangles to indicate the top stones on your wall. Then draw the side view of your wall on the front and back. Use a pencil to draw outlines of tiny stones all along both sides of your wall. Use crumpled up tin foil to create a stone-like texture. This is how it looks so far. Next, paint the stone walls using the technique we went over in episode one. One side of the foam may have a finish that repels water if that's the case, just give it a little sand and you should be able to paint over it. I'm painting each stone a different color to add a little bit of variation to this wall. However, you can continue and paint the entire thing gray or green or whatever you like. This is corkboard. You can find it at craft stores and sometimes the Dollar Tree. You can break it apart, but if you have a craft only food processor, it'll be a lot easier to grind it down. To create mud, first add some baking soda to a cup, you only need a little, and then about an equal part of white glue and some acrylic paints. Then mix in the crumbled up cork board. It should look like lumpy pudding when you're done. Spread it over your piece and let it dry. This is how it'll turn out. While it's wet, it looks crazy, but just trust the process.
Remember in episode one where I said I don't have the patience for the white glue? Well, I lied. In this case, this is much better. Add some watered down white glue in various places on your diorama. I picked up this blended turf from a hobby store, but you can also get it on Amazon. And this sieve that I'm passing it through is actually part of a static grass applicator that me and my dad DIY'd ourselves. We'll go into that in another video. Tap the excess turf off of the diorama and be sure to do it over a paper so that it'll be easier for you to put it back inside the bag. Make some patches more realistic by messing them up with your paintbrush. Hey guys, did I remember to say like and subscribe? You can use the same method to add some vines along your wall. All done guys. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.